Am I different somehow? Is it live or is it Memorex? I really appreciate your support and welcome you to my analysis of David Cronenberg's 1986 science fiction horror film, The Fly, co-written by Charles Edward Pogue and David Cronenberg and based on French-German writer George Langlon's short story of the same name published in the June 1957 issue of Playboy magazine. The Fly stars Jeff Goldblum and Seth Brundle. Gina Davis as Veronica Quaith and John Getz as Stathis Borans. If you like this breakdown of The Fly, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to The Godfather of Cinema. Movie reviews and more, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment, and hit the bell so that you won't miss any new videos that I'll upload in the future. A young scientist named Seth Brundle invents a teleportation device Seth rushes things for it only takes one night of passion with a beautiful journalist named Veronica Quay for him to feel entitled to all of her life secrets as though they are an old married couple. And instead of following protocol by waiting for the test results on a baboon to determine if it had been properly sequenced after being teleported, Seth rushes things again by teleporting himself out of his jealousy that Veronica is still fooling around with her ex, Stathis Borns. There is also Veronica and how she wastes no time in running to tell her boss and chief editor at Particle Magazine, Stathis Borns, about Seth's invention. Even though Seth had already told her that he wasn't ready to reveal the teleportation pods or telepods to anyone yet. But fortunately for Seth, Stathis does not believe her. We don't eat everything we want to eat. We don't say everything we want to say. We don't buy everything that looks good or because we have the money. Because if we feed every desire that we have, those desires will eventually get too big for us to control. Stathis Borans <laughs> still loves Veronica but won't let go of her and move forward with his own life even though he is intelligent enough to know that doing so is the right thing to do. Consequently, his paranoia over the prospect of losing her drives him to follow her to Seth's place, then to a department store the following day where he accuses her of sleeping with Seth. And speaking of Stathis feeding the beast, Seth is also paranoid over the prospect of losing Veronica to Stathis, her ex. Now she runs out late at night to see him. So, despite his superior intelligence, Seth makes an irrational <laughs> spur of the moment decision out of jealousy to teleport himself instead of following protocol and waiting for test results on a baboon he teleported earlier. And as this rash act on his part is born out of something small and irrational, <laughs> entering his mind, Seth unknowingly allows an impurity in the form of a fly into the telepod with him. And when he is taken apart and put back together again, their molecular structures are sequenced into one DNA. Seth goes from being disciplined and rational to carnal with an inordinate appetite for lots and lots of sugar and sex. He also becomes callous and self-centered by pressuring Veronica to let him teleport her too so that they can be one. But she has serious reservations about doing so, especially after seeing an eviscerated baboon that had been taken apart in pod 1 and incorrectly reassembled in pod 2. In addition, 
to the strange insect hairs sprouting out of a small cut on his back. Veronica's fear of teleportation angers Seth, who goes out and picks up a woman at a bar for sex. He wanted to teleport her, hey. Don't be afraid. but Veronica shows up at his place in time to stop him. In addition to feeding carnal foods to the beast that is growing inside of his body and spirit, Seth allows his once neat and tidy loft to fall into a conducive state of clutter and filth. And as Seth's DNA is deprived of the spiritual food that it needs, the features distinguishing him from an insect such as his teeth, ears, and fingernails begin to disappear. Seth has no problem using baboons for guinea pigs, not even when the computer's telemetry, calibrated for inanimate objects, flips a baboon's body inside out. But after teleporting himself and having his DNA confused and combined with that of a fly, Seth no longer has any moral scruples in using human beings for guinea pigs either, such as the young woman named Tawny, whom he picks up at a local bar. But luckily for her, Veronica shows up in time to stop Seth from teleporting her as he teleported himself. Prior to bonding with Veronica, Seth's computer could only process data. Like his computer, Seth knows nothing about any of the parts he forms out for it. Nor does he know anything about the humans who build the parts. In turn, the humans who build the parts for his computer system know nothing about the system, what it does or each other, as Seth knows nothing about the flesh. And likewise, the teleported steak tastes fake because the computer cannot duplicate the process that makes a cooked steak a cooked steak, a process that takes time, which goes against the concept of teleportation or simultaneous manifestation. Like the teleported steak that tastes fake, Seth can duplicate the act of love with the woman he picks up in the bar. He cannot, however, duplicate the same feelings for the woman that he has for Veronica without time. For Veronica is there with him through the ups and downs, there to share in his failures and also there to share in his victories, such as when he finally figures out the algorithm to teach his computer how to teleport living things. Therefore, the woman that he picks up at the bar is just some random Johnny-come-lately chick he has sex with. They have no equity in each other and no time together before having sex, as there is no time or physical space in teleporting from one point to another point, only nothingness. Veronica develops an emotional attachment with Seth that puts him in touch with the flesh or his needs as a physical, spiritual, and emotional being. In turn, he shares his new awareness of Seth with his computer, which in turn converts the telepod into a splicer, literally and figuratively, as Seth and Veronica bond because of the time that they spend together. And speaking of attachment and Seth's inability to separate his DNA from the fly, Veronica cannot seem to separate herself from her ex, Stathis Borens, who happens to be her boss and uses this position to undermine her work with Seth. I want to know what's going on. He often stops by her place to take a shower unannounced. He follows her to Seth's place and a department store to grill her about staying with Seth overnight. I've been waiting for you for one whole week. However, later in the film, Veronica's annoyance with Stathis changes. Like the eviscerated baboon in the beginning of the film, Seth's metamorphosis into a giant fly enables her to see the way that Stathis looks on the inside. In order to overcome motion sickness and shyness, Seth Brundle invents a teleportation system so that he can travel from place to place, from a hermit into an outgoing extrovert in a split second, and avoid the effort it normally takes to overcome motion sickness and shyness. 
And like Seth, Veronica also has a system for avoiding things that are uncomfortable, like cutting loose of her ex, Stathis Borns, and moving on with her life. By equivocating and throwing out mixed signals, she can avoid hurting him by not breaking up with him completely. In one scene, Stathis stops by her place to shower because he kept his key, and she never had her locks changed to keep him out. She also continues to work as a journalist at his magazine, even though she could work for another magazine, such as Psychology Today. Bonding emotionally and physically with Veronica, Seth's personality changes simultaneously as weird hairs appear on his back after he accidentally teleports himself with a fly that fuses with him at the molecular level. Feeling like a new, stronger version of himself, he wants to teleport her too to share his experience, but she is afraid to do this, which angers Seth to leave after threatening to find another woman who will. But even after catching him with the trashy slut at his place, Veronica won't leave him as she won't leave Stathis, despite signs that he could also be dangerous. Seth Brundle teaches his computer how to bond living things together, but once bonded, those things can never go back to being separate. However, as there is no way to start a new life without letting go of an old one, nor to go from one point to another physically without space and time, there is no way that Veronica can move forward with her life without leaving Stathis and hurting him since he cannot separate himself from her <laughs> and move forward with his own life any more than Seth can separate his DNA from the fly. For Stathis avoids the pain of letting Veronica go and moving forward with his life as Seth avoids the discomfort of getting out of his apartment and meeting other people. At first, Veronica won't commit to moving forward after breaking up with Stathis by changing the lock on her door to keep him out and leaving his company and finding a job someplace else. However, by the end of the fly, she realizes that she is only enabling Stathis is emotional paralysis by her indecisiveness and ambiguity. The truth is this, leaving the familiar for the unfamiliar can be uncomfortable and sometimes painful. However, rather than putting off the process, it is best to just end it. Therefore, Stathis shoots the cable between pod one and two to stop Seth from bonding with Veronica and their unborn child. And afterwards, Veronica levels a shotgun at Seth's head and squeezes the trigger, putting him and her relationship with Stathis Borans out of their misery. <laughs> Thanks for watching my analysis of David Cronenberg's 1986 film, The Fly. And be sure to hit the bell to be notified of my next film analysis or review dropping soon. Until next time.